back to Zoo School Live. My name's Holly. Um, Laura's going to be joining me in just a minute. Um, we really appreciate that you guys have been tuning in every day. Um, a really easy way that you can help support us now, Facebook has this stars situation. So if you send us a couple stars, it's a nice simple way for you guys to help support EPZ while we're closed. Um, we got some really incredible artwork yesterday that I want to make sure we show everybody. So it looks like someone has had their kids watching a lot and Lucas and Juliana sent us depictions of so many of the animals that we have done so far. Um, they both did Dude and Pokey and their Breeze are so amazing. Let's make sure we see both of them. Oh my gosh. Little Oliver, who's just so famous. He's, oh my gosh. If you guys are um, purchasing any of our bunny encounters, you're going to be so thrilled to play with them later this year. All right, so keep sending that stuff. You can email it to education at um, elmwoodparkzoo.org um, and we would love to share that stuff with us or you can send it in the mail. We love having hard copies. Um, and now we're gonna meet someone super special. We have Snowy, our Snowy Owl, with our educator, Laura. So hopefully she'll be nice and calm and wanna hang out with us for a while. Yeah. Hi guys. So we're gonna let Snowy take a moment to look around. She's very excited to be out today. So she is a snowy owl, and many of us are familiar with snowy owls from the movie Harry Potter. So most of us have, have grown up or, or just getting into Harry Potter and are familiar with Hedwig the owl. And um, in the movies, Hedwig is played by a snowy owl, but if you look at our snowy owl, you'll notice that she has some brown colors all over her feathers. And those brown colors are because she is a female snowy owl. And the males are actually the ones that have that almost all white plumage or feathers. So in the movie, in the Harry Potter movies, Hedwig is actually played by a male snowy owl. Um, whereas the females in real life, Hedwig would look just like our friend Snowy here. Now, snowy owls are native to the tundra habitat. So this is a habitat a little different than ours here in Pennsylvania and many of the ones we've been learning about all week long. So in the tundra, there is going to be hardly any trees. So similar to a desert, but unlike a desert, it's going to be very cold most of the time and covered with snow. So there's usually snow on the ground most of the year. They do usually have about a two month summer period where that snow might melt. And during that time there is flower bloom, and a lot of growth from the plants that are found in the tundra. But again, not very many trees, pretty wide open space with a lot of snow. And looking at Snowy, you can tell she is designed to survive in this habitat very successfully. She looks like a snow pile, um, hence the name Snowy. And those feathers are gonna help her, help her to hide in that habitat. Um, so she does have camouflage. Now, she is one of the largest species of owl, uh, uh, owl. In fact, they're the largest and the heaviest owl species found here in North America. So she doesn't have to worry too much about predators, but if she were to live in the Arctic tundra and have a nest, she would need to camouflage to help protect her young and her eggs. So those uh, feathers that are gonna be mostly white with some brown and gray um, are gonna help her look just like the snow on, her, on the ground in her habitat. Um, now she's got some really, really big eyes that help her to find her food. And you can see she's munching on some snacks today. There we go, she got a little piece stuck on her beak. Um, and those large eyes are gonna help her to spot her food over those large, wide open spaces. And um, she has what we call facial discs. So if she looks forward, you'll notice that the feathers surrounding her eyes kind of form a big circle on each side. Those facial discs are going to direct sound back to her ears. So not only does Snowy have really large eyes, like most species of owl, to help her um, to see across the Arctic tundra for small animals, but she also has an amazing sense of hearing. But you can't see her ears. Her ears are hidden behind her feathers. Uh, they're just small holes and her ears are actually lopsided. So that means that on one side, the ear is higher than the other. And this helps her to pinpoint sound much better than we can. So our ears are basically on the same spot on either side of our face. For a snowy owl, their ears are lopsided so they can figure out if a sound is coming from above or below them much quicker. And those facial discs, <laughs> those facial discs, those feathers in a circle shape around her eyes, they're gonna act like satellite dishes. They're gonna pinpoint 
the noise and send it back to her ears so she can pick up sounds much better than we can. So she can actually hear a little creature running around underneath the snow and be able to try to track it down and find it and eat it. Um, so her eyes do help her to find food, but those facial discs and those lopsided ears are really important when she's hunting on the Arctic tundra so she can find food under the snow. Now she is a very fluffy owl. She's covered in all those feathers. Um, her feet are very fluffy as well. We'll see if I can give you guys a little better look underneath there. So she has some really fluffy feet. Um, and that's because owls like Snowy are gonna spend a lot of time on the ground. So they basically have these really big fluffy fl uh, slippers on their feet. So she has those sharp talons. That's how she's gonna catch her food just like other birds of prey. So owls and hawks and eagles, they all use their feet to catch their food. But uh, um, covering those feet are gonna be really, really, really thick feathers. So a little different than some of our other birds of prey species, but she needs those big fuzzy sleepers to, uh, sleepers, slippers to keep her feet nice and warm on the snow. Um, she also is gonna have a lot more uh, protection as far as feathers that keep her warm. So down feathers, she's gonna have more layers of feathers than some of our other birds in our area are gonna have. Now, Snowy um, never lived on the Arctic tundra. She actually came to us from a breeding facility in Canada, and she's been living with humans her whole life, so she was raised to be part of a collection like at a zoo and to help us to teach. So she's an ambassador animal, and Snowy's actually been in training for the last year and a half to make sure she's very comfortable around people. Um, myself and, and some of our other staff, shout out to Ashley, have worked really hard to get her comfortable to come out and meet people, especially in months where it's a little warmer. Because again, as a snowy owl, she likes those cold temperatures. Normally in the summer, she just kind of wants to sleep around and hang out, not do much. So um, it was a lot of work to get her to come out and meet people. So we're hoping once the zoo's open, you guys will get to come see her in person. Um, you'll notice that I'm giving her little snacks. That's because we reward her for coming out and being on the perch or being in situations that might be a little different. <laughs> Snowy's never been on camera like this before, so she's uh, this is a new experience for her. And that vocalization, that yelling, that doesn't mean anything bad. That's just kind of her reminding me that she would like some more snacks whenever I get a chance to give them to her. So owls often become pretty vocal when they know that they can earn food rewards for doing different behaviors. So she is uh, always kind of telling me, hey, <laughs> hey, I'd like a snack now, please. Um, you can see on her face as she's looking towards you, um, those facial discs, but they also have all these tiny fine feathers around their beak. And we'll see if she'll demonstrate a little bit there. Um, those feathers actually help her to feel around her face because while owls have amazing vision at nighttime and they can see far distances, they have pretty terrible up close vision. So when she's finding her food, um, she actually has to use her sense of touch with um, those feathers around her beak to help her track it down once it's up close to her. So she might be able to see um, a mouse or a lemming, which is another small animal that lives in the tundra. She might be able to see those small animals really far away, but as soon as she catches one, she kind of has to use those feathers to feel around her face. She doesn't have good up close vision. All right, guys, I think we'll start taking some questions because I'm sure you guys want to know all kinds of exciting stuff about Snowy. So Holly's going to help me out today. She's going to read me some of those questions so I can focus on Snowy as well and try to give you guys a really good answer. All right, Gray and Lucas would like to know how sharp their claws are. How sharp their claws are. Excellent question, guys. So you might notice that I'm wearing a falconry glove. We've seen this, if you guys have been tuning into zoo school, you may have seen us wearing this type of leather glove when we met Killian, the red-tailed hawk, and, <laughs> and Hoover, the black vulture. So when we work with birds of prey, so hawks, eagles, owls, falcons, and sometimes vultures, we do use protective gloves because those claws are extremely sharp. Um, now Snowy is pretty relaxed right now, thankfully, so she's not squeezing really tightly but those claws are very long to, because remember, that's gonna be her main tool for catching her food. So they are very sharp claws. Great question. All right, Theo, hey Theo. I'd like to know what her favorite toy is. What her favorite toy is. So Snowy does not necessarily play with toys the way some of our other animals do. Um, we occasionally will give her different types of food though, kind of as enrichment instead. Um, so she likes to eat mostly mice and rats here at the zoo, but occasionally she does get some chick and um, some venison, things like that. Now we give her different things to sit on, so different perches in her enclosure, and those are kind of um, enriching for her as well. But as far as toys go, we've never really given her much for, for balls or, or games or 
anything like that. But maybe we'll have to give it a try, see how she likes them. Good question. Melita would like to know if she can turn her head all the way around. All right, can she turn her head all the way around? Not quite all the way around, but uh, about three quarters of the way. So she can turn her head 270 degrees. That means that her body can face you guys, um, but she can actually look all the way over to Holly, behind her, and then back to me <laughs> without moving her body. So her head can spin 270 degrees. And that's because she actually has twice as many bones in her neck than we do. So we have seven bones in our neck. Owls typically have 14. And remember, those eyes are very large. Those help her to see far distances. Those eyes are fixed in place. So that means they do not move. Um, they actually weigh, snowy owl eyes weigh the same as an adult human's eye. So imagine a human's eyeball in a small animal like a snowy owl. So that's how big their eyeballs are. Because they're large, they can't move them individually. So instead, they move their neck. Excellent question, guys. Right, Aurora, Danny, and Dante were wondering, since she's from the tundra, if she gets hot here during the summer. Ooh, good question. We do have to uh, give Snowy some very special um, treatment and equipment in the summertime to make sure she stays healthy and happy. She has her own large fan that blows a nice breeze across her all summer long. We give her um, containers filled with ice for her to sit in or stand in. We uh, spray her down. We mist her down for a bath. Um, and if it gets really, really hot, we do have the opportunity to bring her inside in the air conditioning. But thankfully, because Snowy has lived in this area for most of her life, she actually came um, from Canada to New Jersey and then from New Jersey to here in Pennsylvania to Elmwood Park Zoo. She came to us in 2012. She's been living in this area for a while. So she has gotten used to it, but she is still sensitive. So yes, she has her own special fan and her own ice boxes and things to keep her nice and cool. <laughs> Julia and Carissa are wondering if they live with their families or if she would typically live alone in the wild. Good question, guys. So owls are solitary, so that means they do prefer to live by themselves. Now, when it's mating season or breeding season, they will pair up and they will usually pair up for life. But when it's not time to lay eggs or have a nest, they go their separate ways. So they enjoy being alone. Snowy does live by herself here at the zoo. And other than the trainers that she works with occasionally, she does prefer to kind of have her her personal time. Um, now they will have really large territories in the tundra. So um, owls can be pretty territorial. That means they like to defend, they like to defend that space um, and they don't like a bunch of other snowy owls being in that space. So they do prefer to be by themselves and they don't really live with their families. After they've left the nest, they're kind of on their own. All right, great question guys. Rebecca is wondering if she regurgitates pellets. Ooh, yeah. So if you're not familiar with what an owl pellet is, um, when owls eat their food, they sometimes eat it whole. So Snowy could swallow a whole mouse without any problem. She can actually kind of unhinge her mouth a little bit and swallow a very large prey item. Now, when they do that, they don't necessarily want to waste energy um, digesting the bones or the fur. That's kind of stuff that's yucky and they don't really need that. So instead what happens is it separates out inside their tummies and they actually cast up or throw up a pellet and that pellet will have the bones and the fur in it. And pretty much all owl species are gonna do that. So yes, Snowy does cast up a pellet every day. Um, usually owls will do that about once a day after they've had their meal and it's digested for a few hours. You can actually sometimes find the whole skeleton of a mouse or whatever their prey item was in that pellet, which is really cool. Great questions today, guys. All right. So Carol would like to know how much she weighs and Tegan is asking how large her wingspan is. Great questions, guys. So snowy owls on average weigh about four pounds. Snowy herself right now weighs just under four pounds. Um, and their wingspan is typically four to five feet. So they have a pretty big wingspan. We'll see if she wants to show you guys her wings a little bit. Sometimes she gets excited with her snacks and wants to show her wings. Hope she's very curious. There you go. You can see that nice big wingspan. So four to five feet. It's a lot of power. Great questions. Let's get some of the other ones here. Yeah. A couple people are asking how fast she can fly. Do you know that? <laughs> um, I don't know the actual speed. I do know that most of the time snowy owls are going to be sitting. They sit for hours all day long. So they can fly um, and they do fly. Sometimes they even migrate. That means they fly long distances um, in search of food or habitat. But I don't believe they're very fast flyers. Most owls in general are not. They rely on 
sneaking up on their food instead of speed. So when we're talking about birds of prey, things like hawks and falcons are often very fast flyers um, and they're going to uh, dive bomb and grab their food. But a snowy owl and many other species of owl are actually going to swoop down and try to sneak up on their food using their really quiet feathers. So they have special edges on their feathers that allow them to fly almost silently. And there you're gonna remember, sit and listen and watch and try to, try to um, sneak up on that food instead of flying fast. So I don't know exactly how fast. We could try to look that up and maybe answer you guys later in the comments, but they're not very fast flyers. All right, Emma is asking if she is <clears throat> nocturnal. Great question. So snowy owls, <laughs> snowy agrees, it's a great question. Snowy owls are one of the few owl species that are actually more diurnal. So that means they're active during the day. Um, snowy here at the zoo is more active generally in the daytime just because she is an ambassador animal. So she comes out and meets people a lot. But in their natural habitat on the tundra, um, during different times of the year, there could be extended periods of daylight or nighttime. So they kind of adjust their schedule um, depending on what's happening with the season there, but they are often more active during the day. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I mean, Aria is interested in how old Snowy is. <coughs> so Snowy, excuse me guys, got a tickle. Um, Snowy will be nine years old this year. So she actually was born, <coughs> we believe in 2011. <coughs> All right, um, <coughs> Victoria would like to know if snow owls lay eggs and how many, um, and they do in fact lay eggs. Um, they typically will lay between three and 11 eggs um, and they'll lay them every other day over the course of several days. Um, Snowy, I don't think has laid eggs here though. Nope, no eggs here. All right, <coughs> Excuse me, a couple guys. people are asking what she is eating right now. So Ooh. she is eating one of her favorite foods here at the zoo, which is rodents. Um, Laura does make those pieces a lot smaller so that she can more easily give them to Snowy as little tidbits or bites. Um, but those are either rats or mice that she's eating right now. <laughs> and she seems to be asking for another tidbit mm -hmm. as we speak. Yeah. Right. Um, Christine would like to know if they have a good sense of smell. <clears throat> they really do not. So um, owls and other birds of prey, um, remember, are going to use those eyes and they're going to use their hearing, but when it comes to their nose, their noses aren't that great. Um, most owls in our area actually use that to their benefit, so we have great horned owls that live in this area, and they will often hunt for skunks because they don't have a very good sense of smell. When same thing kind of goes for Snowy, um, we believe that they can smell a little bit, they can taste um, like we do, so our sense of smell and our sense of taste are very, very similar, um, but the when it comes to a Snowy Owl, she doesn't have a great sense of smell and they don't really need to track their food with smell. Good question, guys. So we have a fun question from Brooklyn. She wants to know if Snowy is friends with Zeppelin, a oh. screech owl. Um, not really. So remember, owls kind of like to hang out on their own. Snowy actually lives in a different part of the zoo than our friend Zeppelin. She has her own uh, private enclosure behind the scenes. So Zeppelin, a screech owl, if you guys recall, he did live with other owls. Um, but uh, our friend Snowy, she's not really familiar with him. In fact, I think Zeppelin might be a little afraid of Snowy because he has to watch out for those bigger owls in his natural habitat, and she's a very, very large owl. Um, so we just got some info looked up for us. Oh. It looks like they can fly up to 50 miles per hour. Very wow. cool. That's really good. So they can really get going if they need to. Yeah. All right. Um, we have a great question from Vivian. Um, probably a lot of people are asking uh, or wondering <clears throat> Um, if they've been watching some of our previous episodes or if they saw us in with the bats yesterday. Um, she's asking why we're, we're not wearing a mask um, and if the animals ever wear a mask. <laughs> Great question. So Snowy does not ever wear a mask. That would be a very interesting thing. Um, we are not wearing masks when we're working with our birds or our reptiles because there is less um, of a risk for them to transmit anything back to us and, and vice versa. Um, Holly and I are trying to keep our distance from each other here. Uh, when we're not on screen, we are practicing social distancing and wearing masks. But when it comes to working with our birds, thankfully there's not much of a risk of transmitting anything. Um, we're obviously gonna be uh, careful in general with handling them. And sometimes our owls can be reactive to the, to the mask. So think about when you're looking at someone with a mask, you can't really tell their expression as well, or you can't see their face. 
So it's actually sometimes a little weird for our birds to see us wearing masks. So um, great question. We are practicing those social distancing and protective measures when we're off camera. Um, but when it comes to our birds, thankfully we don't have to worry too much about that. You guys are asking some amazing mm -hmm. questions. This is a personal favorite here. Tally and Adam want to know if she still poops even though she uses those pellets to get rid of most of her waste. Yes, she does poop. In fact, I'm actually surprised we haven't seen it yet today. Um, maybe that'll be a cue for her. But uh, owls do poop very often, just like many other birds. They can poop uh, 40 plus times a day. Um, they'll often poop right before they take off because that helps to uh, lower their body weight and they want to be nice and light when they're flying. So yes, owls and other birds do still poop even though they cast up those pellets. Good question. All right, Stephanie is wondering what the life expectancy is for soy oh, owls. Great question. So in a zoo setting, so where Snowy lives here, they can live upwards of 30 years, sometimes longer. Um, so Snowy herself is gonna be nine this year, as we mentioned earlier. Um, so she's not super old. Um, in the wild, typically they live between 10, 15, sometimes 20 years. If they can reach adulthood, so if they're a grown-up snowy owl, um, they have a pretty good chance of surviving. There's not a lot of natural predators. The main issues that these owls face in the wild are um, habitat loss and then, you know, the shifting climate. So they like a cold area and, and the way our world is changing right now, some of those temperatures in the tundra are shifting higher than normal. Um, so that is a threat to our snowy owls. But if they can make it to adulthood, then they usually can live, you know, 10, 15, sometimes 20 years. Large owls typically can live a pretty long time. All right, looks like we have time for one or two more questions. Um, Scarlett is interested to know what her feathers feel like. Ooh, her feathers are extremely soft. Now, I know this, not because I've touched Snowy herself. Um, she would not like that very much at all. Um, but she actually goes through a process called molting, and we have a few of her feathers here that Holly can share with you guys. And um, when she molts, she's actually losing old feathers and growing new ones. And uh, those feathers are extremely soft because they have a very special edge, a fringe, that actually helps up to to, um, helps to break up the air. So when a bird flaps its wings, they have to push that air out of the way. It can often make a lot of noise, but remember owls want to sneak up on their food. So like many other species, she has a fringe on the edge. Um, so her, her feathers are very soft, but I have never got to touch Snowy herself because we do practice very safe um, general distancing from Snowy <laughs> because she has that very sharp beak and those very sharp claws. Good question, guys. Right, so we've got um, kind of a general curiosity from Colin here who wants to know how owls fly. How owls fly. All right, so Snowy has a pretty big set of wings. We'll see if she'll show those off again for you guys. Um, and uh, you can see that they are four to five feet wide. And what they will do when they're ready to fly is they're gonna pump their wings. So that means flap them back and forth. And that's going to create um, some energy so they're going to use that to get forward motion they're going to kind of move forward a little bit and once they get the wind moving over their uh, wings that creates lift so it actually the motion of the air going over her wings will help relieve some of the pressure and lift up those wings and that's how they get up into the air so that's a very basic version of how they fly um, they have very strong muscles on their chest that attach to those wings and help them to um, pump back and forth so that they can get enough energy and, and lift to move. And then of course they're covered with feathers which don't weigh a whole lot and don't weigh them down um, to, uh, to make sure that they're not too heavy. Because humans, we can't really fly without assistance because unfortunately we're just too dense, too heavy. All right, All right guys, is that our last question or we have one let's, more? Let's do one more. We've All right. We've got so many fun ones. Um, Caitlin just asked if she has teeth. Does she have so teeth? Excellent question. She does not have teeth. Instead of teeth, she has a sharp beak that she uses to rip and tear. Um, now, like other birds, that beak is going to be made of keratin. So it's made of the same material as your fingernails. Um, thank you guys so much. You've had great questions today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed meeting Snowy and learning a little bit about the tundra habitat and all other habitats this week. We hope you guys will tune in again on Monday. Um, next week's actually Earth Week, so we'll be celebrating Earth Day and um, learning all about how we can protect our planet, not only for ourselves, but for species like the snowy owl. Remember, she is a, a species that could be threatened by climate change and, and some of the habits that humans have that aren't so great for the environment. 
So make sure you tune in for Zoo School and our other fun activities. If you are able to support us during this challenging time, check out our emergency fund on our website. And of course, continue to send artwork and reach out to us. We love hearing from you. And we hope to see you again next week. Thanks, guys. Right, thank you.